In this lesson, we will talk about how to customize the format and course setup for your course. So the goal is to take this blank course shell and make it look a little bit more like this. And you will notice that on this particular completed course, we've got the topics listed, but you can't really see anything underneath it. And if you click on any one of the topics or the weeks, it will basically show you just that one particular week. So this is one way of doing it. Or if you want to see all of the topics in a linear format, you could do that as well. And I'll show you how to do that. So in this particular course, if we wanted to customize these things, and I'm going to start off with the completed course project because the settings for this course are already done. So what we will do is go to the little gear icon at the very top, click on the drop down and click on edit settings. And this is where you can go ahead and customize the course of the uh, the name of the course, the short name category if it's available. Now, in some institutions, some of this information is restricted to the administrator, so you may not be able to customize all of that. But you should be able to put in your course description and all of this other information over here. And if we click on course format right there, you will see that it is listed in topics format, and you've got a drop down with other formats as well, such as social format. Uh, and weekly format. If you were to select the weekly format, the layout of the folders would basically align with the start of your course date and the end date. Underneath it, you will see that there is an option co course layout and it says show one section per page. Now you could do one section per page or you could do all sections. And right above it says hidden sections are shown in collapsed form. You could have a collapse, which means basically it's not visible until you click on it, or you could do completely visible. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and save and display. And if you recall earlier on, it was just basically the topics that were listed. Now you should see everything underneath the topics. As you can see right here, it's got the topics and also the links and resources, assignments, and any other activities and videos that you basically have in that course. Uh, so this is one option for you to kind of uh, determine how you want your course to be laid out. All right, so we are going to go over to our blank course shell and start working on the format and course setup. So you will begin by clicking once again on uh, the wheel. You can click right there and click on Edit Settings. And I am fine with the course name and the short name. The category is already selected. Course visibility. Uh, this is a great option to use if you want to make your course visible before your term or semester begins, or if you want to keep it hidden, you can do that as well. If you're perhaps working on the course and still building it and you don't want anyone to see it listed. I typically have my courses hidden until I'm done working on them, and then I will go ahead and change this to show. Uh, for right now, we're just going to leave it at show, and then you can select the uh, course start and end date. And the course end date could be enabled or not. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, just check that out. Th therefore, it's uh, going to be available uh, in indefinitely. Some schools have uh, course ID numbers. Um, we don't have one for this particular course, so we're going to leave that blank. For course summary, we're just going to go ahead and put in some text over here. I'm going to go ahead and bold this. And for the course image, if you recall, we had uploaded some files into the private files section. So you can go ahead and just click right here and find the folder that we created earlier on. It, we labeled it accounting, so I'm going to click on that. Click on images, because that's where I had the images folder. And I want to use this picture right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as basically the image that I want for my course. I am going to go ahead and click on select this file right there. And then we're going to go down to course format. And I want to continue on with the topics format. I'm going to leave the hidden sections as is. We're going to go to course layout and it says show all sections on one page. And yes, I do want that because we're only going to be doing one particular uh, topic in this sample course. Let's go to appearance. We're going to leave the course language as is. Number of announcements. Uh, you can do five depending on what you want to do. I'm going to go with three. Show gradebook to students. This is something that I typically always leave on. This way students can always access the gradebook and see how they are performing in the course. 
show activity report. By default, this is no, but if you were to change it to yes, this provides students the opportunity to go to their profile and see basically how they're doing in the course in terms of uh, which activities have completed and what might be remaining for them. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to yes. In terms of files and uploads, this allows you basically to determine the maximum size of files that you will allow your students to upload to your course. And uh, personally, I like to go with the highest number, but if there are limitations in terms of storage on your server, you might go with a lower number, especially if your course does not have files that students need to upload that require a lot of graphics or memory. Completion tracking is completely optional. If you choose to enable, you can leave it as yes, or you can turn it uh, into no. And basically what this does is it basically creates an indicator by every activity that students need to complete to let them know whether or not it is done or not. So it, it's a way for them to be, to be able to, to um, track their progress. All right, so the group section is something that we may use later on, and I personally typically do create groups in my courses because I do have students working on group projects and portfolios together. Um, however, we will need to set that up later on. Um, I typically like to set up the groups after I've uploaded all of the assignments and activities, and then I can go and basically um, assign them to particular groups. So we're gonna leave this as, as is for right now. The last thing that we're going to do in terms of setup is um, we're going to create the categories for the gradebook. So we're going to click on Turn Editing On. We are going to the next thing that we're going to do is set up the categories in the gradebook. So we're going to go to the little settings icon right here on the right hand side, click on it and click on gradebook setup. Now in my particular course, I'm going to have assignments, discussions, quizzes and exams and a group activity. So I want to create a category for all of these. So we are going to go to this page right here and we're going to click on add category. And the first one is going to be the assignments. And we're going to leave all the settings as they are right now. We're not going to change anything. And we're going to notice that now we're going to have this little category right here. And we can move this up and down if we want to. But I'm going to leave it as is right now. The next category that I want to create is for quizzes and exams. And we're going to create another category for group activity. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and rename this to group project. Because this is actually a group project that has multiple parts to it. We're going to save. All right. And that's it for right now. Later on, as we start creating activities, assignments, quizzes, exams, discussion forms, we're going to be able to assign them to a particular category. Once we're done, click Save Changes, and we are done setting up the categories in the gradebook. And that's about it. We are going to go ahead and click Save and Display. Now, it may look like we haven't done anything. However, if you go back to the dashboard, you will see some changes. If you click on Site Home, this takes you basically to the home page for um, your institution. And you will notice that it'll have the name of the course, the image that we uploaded, as well as the course summary. That all appears, and this was not there previously.